listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hello. Is anybody listening? Are they? Let's see. Um, <laughs> Kajiana. Listening. I'm an armchair and I'm listening. Ooh. Yay. Ba- Bowser 3-3, contagious divine listener. Uh, laughter. Jesus. I'm on the East Coast and I'm a lousy sleeper, so I'm out there walking the streets of my town around 4 a.m. Oh, goodness. With coyotes running a foot and Ooh. a foul. And I have this silly grin on my face because of this podcast. This morning I laughed aloud no fewer than four times. Yes, it's partly that their laughter is contagious in and out of itself. It's also the fact that they're delightful human beings who have an ability to look at themselves and their union with humor and humanity. Thank you for the unmitigated joy. I think we just found our best review of all time. Holy gamoly. What's that person's name? Bowser33 at. Bowser33 at. Well, first of all, let's see if we can give them five laughs today. Mm. Tonight, I guess. Um, that is incredible. Well, I just want to say to everyone, thank you so much. Please keep the reviews coming, even though we're only reading a few of them. Trust that we read each and every one, in my case, multiple times and love them very, very much. And they always brighten my day. Can I do one more from Claro Line? Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that as it's written. Claro Claire Claro Line. Claroline, 92. Elizabeth Andy, so thrilled that this podcast is back. Started listening back in 2014 when my sister referred me. Since then, I've gotten multiple multiple friends, my sister, and my husband invested in the lame world. I listened to Totally Mommy back in the day, but now that I am pregnant with my first baby, I'm going back through and finding Aww, so much comfort congrats. in the laughs and real talk you have in that show. I hoard your podcasts as they come out so I can have a treat uh, of listening. Amazing. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, for everyone who loves us, we love you back. Mm. Um, Andy and I will be doing a live stream on Patreon on Thursday, November 3rd at 8.30 p.m. Um, Sick. And I'm very excited Bring about your questions. It. Any questions you have always wanted to ask us. So that's at patreon.com slash totally lame, L-A-I-M-E, um, for a very small fee, monthly fee. You get all of our back episodes. That's around 1,300 of them. And um, little uh, goodies such as these live streams. And I just saw Patreon's launching a video part of it, which is very exciting to me. Mm. So there might be more video content coming. Okay. Our regular video content is on Instagram at totally, uh, no, at nobody's listening right. Love it. Okay. I want to say one thing about reviews real quick. Okay, go ahead. And then we'll move on. I'm really hoping I I have an inkling there's going to be some international talk on today's episode, yeah. and it would delight us to no end if there were some international reviews next week. I don't. Oh, maybe we. How would we know? Oh, darn it! I don't know what you're doing right now. Because Never mind. I guess we wouldn't be able to know. No, we can know. It's just. Uh, you have to, it's a whole process of, of getting seeing to the them. reviews. And we are too lazy to do it. So you're like asking people to put the work in. Are you going to do this? You're going to go through country by country? Well, how about this? If we mention your country on this episode, specifically that country, and you leave us a review, we will check that country. Let's just try not to name too many countries. Okay. I want to give a shout out to Iran. Still going. Nice. We are with you in solidarity to all of the incredibly brave Iranians who are protesting. Um, so that's one. Okay. And then we'll get there. First of all, mm. I had a correspondence with St. Monica herself. Oh. And she asked me something, <laughs> which was regarding the pool table story. She said, were there any animals in that house? And she has a theory that it was a mean animal, which uh, I know she means it's a cat. Oh, <laughs> it was a cat. But is a cat going to make a pool ball jump a lip of a pool table? Like, that's a pretty strong cat. Cats are, I think, way stronger than we think. <laughs> I am imagining a cat holding the pool ball, like, standing on her on its hind legs, holding a pool ball, like, over the lip of the table with both pause and like trying to find trying to line it up with my face <laughs> and then that's trying. an evil fucking cat yeah. yeah 
it's Monica. It's plausible. I like. I can't believe this has never been thrown into the theories because it's a really solid theory. It's as solid as the ghost theory. I will say that. Can we put out this call to our listeners? If you have a cat and a pool table, can you do some sort of test for us just to see if the cat could even push the pool ball around? I think they're way stronger than we think. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know how they can like fall from like eight stories up? But that's a different strength. But yes, I mean, listen, I, I, I think this theory has as much weight as any other, truly. Tag us on um, Instagram if you get any video of your cat moving up. I would give up. anything to be able to find the mom. I feel like the mom has the most answers. If she's, if she's still living, she's the living person who has the most information. Outside of if it were like a mean kid or something who well, actually did it. Let's not dwell here too long. Yeah. But how do you find the mom? Let's real quick. Okay, you went to. Do you know what school you went to? This is not a real quick thing. I, it's not. Not, not this actually. Really no, no, is no, no, not a real not quick actually thing. finding the mom. But I'm saying the steps. What school yes. did you go to? I mean, I you know I that? would have to. Yeah, I would have to. T- 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 do you know what school it was? <laughs> Stop it! I would have to dig up. Yes, I went to Glorieta Elementary School. This was East Bay, San Francisco. I would. I think my. I think a kid in my class was the son of my dentist. So I would have had to have gone to the dentist, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what you do. Can I just say, and then we can move on. You have to call that school and you got to pray you get someone game for this to answer the phone in the office. And you have to explain the whole situation and be like, I'm just, I just need to start with like, like a yearbook or names or something. I have yearbooks. You have the yearbook of <laughs> holy fucking shit. You Why have. Why would I not have my elementary school yearbooks? Do you hear how absurd <laughs> that is? You even saying that? No. Why? Why wouldn't I have my elementary? Not everybody has their elementary school yearbook. Okay. <laughs> not everybody's a hoarder like you. So I'm kidding. Um, Sick burn. You. <sighs> We need to just go through that yearbook. You got to narrow down the girls that could have been on the. This is so much easier than I can't believe you have the yearbook with pictures of the girls you were friends with, with their names in it. That's how yearbooks work. Yeah. Will you let me do this? Holy well, you shit. Be able to. I feel like this is a three hour afternoon. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe at some point in time, this is not like a high priority. I feel like I have 7,000. How many feet I'm, away is the yearbook from where we're sitting right now? Probably 15. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Okay. This is really it's in exciting. Storage. I mean, it's in storage. It is in storage? Yeah. In our garage. Stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's in a bin out there. Yeah. This is really exciting. I don't know why you seem. I mean, I'm. I'm I understand why you're annoyed just, at my I, attitude. I can, I get that. Yeah. But I'm genuinely excited that there's a yearbook we can look. You're gonna be like, I I think I was at the slumber party with like these different six girls, and we're gonna be like, okay, great, let's get on Facebook. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> Okay. Okay, listeners, just so you know, I'm going to look at the yearbook. I know this is a lot to add to your plate, um, but this seems like a very fun thing. I can't believe you have the yearbook. Okay, sorry. Um, Maybe we do this on the live Patreon. I don't know if um, we don't know. We don't know how dark um, things have gotten for some of these girls at that sleeping party, like slumber party. We don't want to be airing out their oh, yeah, names that's and a good stuff. Point. That's a good point. Cause there's a, a likelihood that there was a it, sociopath amongst us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't want to open up a can of worms. Like we have to tread lightly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. This really could be a whole spinoff podcast of like once we well, pulled one yarn, someone reached out. Apparently there's a podcast on Gimlet. Heavyweight. Heavyweight. Yeah. Where the guy kind of does this sort of thing. Yeah. So, you know. Oh, that would be a great heavyweight episode. So maybe, 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 who knows? Might be a little too easy for him because, you know, it's just the yearbook situation and getting on Facebook. I don't think it is that cut and dry, Andy. You're acting like there are so many variables here. Like, who's died? I also, uh, this is going to throw a real curveball in here. 
and I hesitate to share this because because your face right now. <laughs> I know you're going to this I feel like it's gonna be heartbreaking for no, me. No, 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 no. It's not heartbreaking. It's something I was reticent to share because I'm so unclear on everything, which makes it seem like it didn't happen. But like physically, I know this happened. It's one of these things that was during a time in my life that is very hazy. Like I have very few clear memories and I'm 95% sure this was in East Bay, San Francisco. But 5% of it, I'm like, or was it very, very early in St. Louis? So that's a curveball. But I'm almost, I'm 95% sure it was San Francisco. That is a very manageable curveball. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you have the St. Louis yearbooks? Yeah. But I, yes. Yeah. But I know all the St. Louis people. So anyway, whatever. Which would make it easier if for some reason you strike out in the San Francisco path. I think you're putting, I think you're putting too much stock in me looking at a yearbook and going, oh yeah, like these people. It wasn't that sort of situation. No, but here's, here is my theory. When you look at, if I looked at my elementary yearbook, I would be like, oh yeah, that guy used to go over to his house. I forgot his name, but oh, that's his name, Joe. Like, you had a very, you had a very remember. different, um, like. <laughs> a different one? What, what you, was your childhood like, Elizabeth? Experience. I, because there's a very big delineation of like when we moved, my entire life started over and my memory was almost like wiped of certain friendships, especially like I, oh, you know what? There are two girls that I remain in touch with who are my childhood friends, Bria and Josephine. Mm -hmm. They might know something. And they were there too? No. They weren't there. Are you kind of scared about what you might find? (laughs) No, no, I'm not scared. I just like... Wait, what's Bria's relationship to this era? So Bria and Josephine were my like preschool best friends and our moms all were friendly. Okay. I'll have to look at Glorietta. I I have to look at that elementary school yearbook cuz I think maybe maybe they were in elementary school with me but then I think they both changed schools at one point in time, but the three of us still remained like thick as thieves. And you know, we like reunited in New York mm-hmm. and um you know, I'm still in touch with both of them. And so so it was like a separate from school friendship. Got it. Now, there, there is, <laughs> I think that the girl whose house I was at was this little blonde girl who was from Australia. And I remember thinking she was very rich. Okay. But I might, ugh, again, this is all so hazy. But you, there's plenty here to get started with. Okay. I'm going to need you and our listeners are going to need you. To just look at the yearbook with me. Okay. And then that's all That's all I'm putting on your plate right now. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Because I also kind of think it'd be fun if I was the guy like reaching out about this to people. <laughs> you want to take this on? I love that. Do you want to reach out to that Gimlet guy? I, well, I want to get some more information first. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Anywho, that, so thank you, St. Monica. That's a very interesting theory. Mm-hmm. But yeah, still a mystery. Wow. This is one of the things I would love to ask my mom about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one of many. Yet another reason I wish she were still alive. Uh huh. <laughs> I was going to say, you, I know you want to save this and talk about this at another time, but you did speak with a medium recently. Yeah, I do want to save that for my other podcast. It's a shame you didn't ask the medium about the pool ball incident. That seems like a missed op. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, let's talk. I'm in such a weird headspace. Yeah. I am simultaneously... Like, incredibly grumpy and irritable. 
mm-hmm. but also like enjoying the heck out of your company. And you were a real roller coaster ride last night because it was like you would be in the worst mood ever, and then all of a sudden you would be like game to play. And yeah. then let's talk I've about. I just had a few bad days, you know. And by the way, you pointed out I've had like work shit where you rightfully pointed out my bad day at work is still a great day. Like I, you know, I love the people I work with. I'm still laughing and stuff, but just stuff comes up and yep. it's whatever. You've been busy been busy I'm working on all these different projects I'm just feeling like really overwhelmed and like there's no time and my back's all fucked up and whatever so I'm complaining but also acutely aware of how much I have to be grateful for and we actually had an incredible week yeah I won an award yes I got I got my I did my first like red carpet event I didn't win an award. I <laughs> I sound so obnoxious. You didn't win an my award. My coworkers who are listening, if I know one of them, <laughs> I apologize for framing it that way. I accepted an award on behalf of the show I work for. Then you and the whole show won an award. Yes, we all won an award. I see what you're saying. I just I accepted that, it. I see that you it's want to clarify, but I, you you guys won an award. And it wasn't. It's also like not even you. It's not an award you win. It's an honor bestowed upon you. So I'm just like being very loose and fast with the language here. But listen, there's an award sitting in our house right now. What do you call that thing? That looks like an award to me. What do you call those things? It's not I a trophy. It's it like a trophy. Kind of like that. And and I accepted it on behalf of our entire show. You had to give a speech. I gave a speech along with Lucille Masson, who Amazing. co-wrote an episode with me, and she's incredible and. It was her first episode produced that she wrote on TV and was also accepting this award for it, which was very cool. That's very cool. So it was a magical, amazing night. So much fun. And I had the experience of, I feel like our OG listeners will appreciate this because they heard us back in the day and heard me constantly being like trying so hard to make a career happen out of nothing. Yeah. And, um, I got there. It was at the television called Academy something. Um, you know, a big fancy television place. And they have a big statue of the Emmy out front. And I get out and there's a big statue. And I'm looking and I look over and I see my long lost old friend, Megan Nuringer. Oh, nice. Who I love so much. She's so talented and funny. And she and I go way, way, way back to UCB New York. And we used to write sketches together and like spend a lot of time talking to each other about wanting careers and how can we make it happen. And yeah, yeah. a lot of frustration about it and a lot of like, you know, just blind faith that we're doing something that will turn into something. And and then she was an accept she was accepting the honor on behalf of her show that's so cool upload and i just had such a crazy moment of gratitude like wow yeah how incredible it's so cool what an amazing experience and so that was very exciting and cool and then um i'd say the week kind of unraveled after that but then i'm very proud of you for that by the way thank you and you looked awesome too thanks i was saying (sighs) that's all you want you want the award that's and to look good at the I award show. About. I mean, that's what it's all about at these things. I had my hair and makeup done, and gosh, did it pay? I'm so I was really on the fence about doing it. It's, okay, you know, it's not cheap. How much does it cost? It's three hundred bucks. Okay, and to me, that's a lot to spend on something that feels like slightly kind of frivolous. But this seems like this is the time you do this it. This seemed like the time to do it if you're going to do it. And I will say, I was so glad I did because. I have never been in a situation like that. And this is a sad thing. And I, I think I'm, I think it's in part because of hair and makeup, very much so. Also, in part, like some of the work I've been, the internal work I've been doing on my relationship with how I look. Stunning. Which is. It must be a hard relationship you have. It is. Like I have, I'm n- yeah. I've never felt really comfortable and confident in a situation like that where there's a lot of effort put forth into like picking out what you're wearing and how you're going to look. I always feel uncomfortable and like, Oh, I wish I were this. I wish I were that. I wish I, you know, things were different. Yeah. Yeah. And this was the first time I really felt like 
comfortable in my skin and confident that I felt like I looked good and it was really nice. Hell so yeah. that was cool. Then you and I went to a concert last night. I feel like I'm just rambling, but anyway, a lot to be grateful for. And also I was incredibly grumpy yesterday. Yes. <laughs> well, let's talk about this. Con- I want to talk about music and concerts in general for a minute because yes, what I, what an amazing week I've had on that front. Yes. I went and saw uh, Death by Romy, who's an artist I wor- I've worked with a ton. She had a new um, album project. I don't know what the kids are calling it this, these days, but come out on Friday. Um, and I produced a couple songs on that. And she had like an EP uh, release show Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been to a small show like that. And not that this was super small, but you know what I mean? Like a club show. Mm-hmm. Since the pandemic started, I just haven't right. gone to a smaller, yeah, you know, how I, big, like how many people were there? Probably, I, probably like 200, 300, okay. something like that. But, um, and anyways, so fun to see a show like that and the energy of a show like that, yes. And I hadn't also seen Romy perform in three years, and holy fucking shit, so incredible, did she fucking bring it? Her band was so fucking badass. She had three different dancers. It was so fucking cool. So I was just so proud of her. And then it's always, as a producer and songwriter, it's just always cool to see your, your songs, songs come to life. Like, it's just crazy to see that. Um, so that was very magical. And there was there's one song in particular uh, that we made that's on this EP called I Was Rather Disappointed, which is just a very emotional song for Romy. It's about her mom and some heavy stuff and it was a very special song for me to make. I feel so honored that I got to make it with her and she cried after that song was on Mm -hmm. and I just fell apart at the show. I mean, when her, when she started crying, I was just waterworks, but it was such a beautiful moment. Then I cried again the next night and you, I don't think you even knew this. I don't think I did. So we went and saw Stromae who's this incredible Belgian artist based in France. I think based in France. All of his music's in French. Um, and I didn't know he was Belgian. Yeah, Belgian or Belgium? Belgian. Belgian? He's Belgian. Belgian, with an N. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I have been like such a huge fan of him for a long time. I got you hooked on him. Mm-hmm. And so we <laughs> went to this show, and we'll get we can get into the show in a minute, but... Like one or two songs in, mm-hmm. we it was at the Shrine Auditorium in L.A., which was I've never been there. It's a very cool place. Probably I don't know what do you think two thousand people something like that two yeah. to three thousand people. Yeah. And that whatever like the first or second song, I got started getting teary eyed at just how like joyful that place was, mm-hmm. and looking around at all of those people there collectively. It's just been a while since I felt that. Like I guess I went to the Billie Eilish concert with. I guess I've been to some bigger shows lately, but there was something that felt really special about this. Everybody there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just hadn't had that in a long time. So I had it like two nights in a row. Yeah. That's just a good feeling. And you forget about how important those like big coming togethers are, whether it's a sports thing, a concert. Like there's a reason we do that as people, I think. There is. There's a purity to it. Like when you're all there appreciating art. And yeah. also Strome, that show, the the multimedia aspect of it was one of the best shows I've ever seen in my entire life. I think the best one of the best concerts, hands down, I've ever seen. And he, uh, there is a joy to his music and a vulnerability that I feel like sometimes with other huge pop, pop, pop artists, you don't get because... I mean, it's kind of like uncool to just appreciate joy for joy. Yeah, yeah. And there was also something about being in, you know, 3,000 people in L.A. The I'd say the majority of the people there seemed like they were French. Yeah, yeah. We didn't French hear much. French speaking, yeah. not much English being sm- spoken, um, which was also really cool because there's such a vibe. Yeah, man. French people would rule. They're God, they're so fucking cool. But also to what I'm saying, not trying to be cool. <laughs> like there you think is they're born with it. I think they're born with it. And there is this like 
it was it's joyful music and also open and vulnerable and honest music and, and also let's be clear we don't we knew 10 percent of what he's singing about that's what's amazing about his music Speak for yourself okay maybe you know a lot more i don't know french so i'm only getting a couple words here and there but it is so emotional his music mm -hmm. i feel like i know what every song is about like that's another th thing i think why he's so special mm -hmm. is that he really conveys emotionally the message via the music and the intonation of his voice and like how we perform. I don't know, man. I'm like, I, I, he's up there in my like top three artists of all time now, I think. Yeah. He is fucking, that was so fucking cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So I was enjoying it, but I'm also, I'm also <laughs> straddling this like hellscape of fear. Yes. Because I, during the concert, I'm like, I want to live in France at some point in time. He's making me want to be a French person. Oh, yeah. What was your journey when, like, the watching the show? Were you having some fun fantasies and dreams? Uh, well, I was mostly just appreciating it and stuff. But it was more like walking around before the show gotcha. and after the show where I'm like, God, everyone's so chic and cool and whatever. But also... With this awareness now that I've been talking to you about this week, my and trigger warning to anyone who's really scared of flying. Oh, yeah. My fear of flying is back full force. And I don't know if it's because I clicked on some article or something and now my like feed is being populated with all of this horrible stuff. But like, well, let's start with the concert, <laughs> the adjacent thing that I think is making you think of this flying fear. Of what happened well, it, at the concert. Well, both things were happening. It was like, oh, to live in France, I'd have to fly there. Maybe I could take a ship. Oh, wait. So you were thinking about flying last night before the, yes. or during the Oh, my God. And then <laughs> during the concert, we're at the Shrine Auditorium and we're up in the mezzanine, so like the balcony. Yeah. Huge balcony with probably 1,500 people standing yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Strome is very poppy music. You want to dance. So there were a couple times he's like, jump with me. And 1,500 people on this balcony started jumping. And the balcony <laughs> moved in a way, yeah. like was bouncing like a trampoline. Yeah. Like, honestly, like if you were on a trampoline and someone else was gently, yeah. not even that gently, bouncing, yeah, that's what was happening to this. And I was like, oh, my fucking God. And I didn't We're notice it. We're all going to die. Like, I didn't notice it the first time because I'm jumping and didn't notice it. And then for that song ends. And I looked over to you like with a like, holy shit, how fucking cool is this? And you just put your like arm on my shoulder <laughs> and looked really scared. And I was like, huh, that's weird. Because the whole time you had been like, we kept looking at each other like, holy shit, this is so cool. And then it wasn't till the next jumping section and I felt it. And then I instantly knew what was going on with you. I was like, oh, she's fucking terrified. And it was a little jarring once I noticed it. And so there's one song that is my second favorite song of his. It's, it's, it's Allure on Dance. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's probably the song he was closing with because I, I think it's his most popular song. And I knew when that song hit, we were all going to die. And I literally <laughs> was like, this is it. And I was thinking, you know, I'm going through this stuff in my head. It's the same thing with flying where I'm like, what are the odds? Like, what are the odds that it's this moment in time? I had already gotten to, I'm positive that this balcony is going to collapse at some point in time. How many people do you think at that show? And did you do this math? Because I did do the math of like, if this falls we're probably fucked, but the people below us are definitely dead. Yeah. But maybe we live. Did you th have that no, thought? No, no, I was done. I, <laughs> you were, uh, we Andy, all die? I was going to the, like, there was a kid behind me. Yeah. And I was going to, like, how can I save her? I mean, I already was, like. That's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> but I also was looking, I was, like, we are not in the center Probably the people in the center are, are most at risk, but we were pretty, we were far enough in that I was like, I think we're t done for. But <laughs> also I was looking around and I was like, 
But so you were calculating all. Oh my gosh! But there how was many so people much were doing math. that? Which is interesting. Well, I, the first time I, so then I was justifying it. I was like, no one else really seems that alarmed. But then I'm like, but that's when these things happen. I mean, you see these stories about like these huge weddings with a thousand people all jumping at once and the floor completely gives way. Like they weren't expecting that to happen because you trust the, the thing that you're on. Well, we were having warning, like this thing was bouncing. Yeah. And I look over and I see like the two rows in front of us who are older people, not yeah. older, but like 50. Okay. Looking at each other with alarm. Yeah. And that's when I was like, we got to go before that Hello, song before starts. the finale. And, well, and so your head's going. <laughs> I, you know what's so funny, and I want our audience to know we literally hadn't talked about this yeah. with each other because it's a loud, crazy concert. Yeah. I had the thought, okay, it's going to take us like two hours to get out of that parking garage. Is there? Do we maybe leave a song or two early? I'd already had that thought because I'm that fucking guy, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, which I'm always on board for. I'm always down to leave. But here's the problem: the show was so amazing. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to miss anything. But then they play. He played two of my favorite songs had already been accounted for, so I already felt good about that. But I was like, oh, but to see a allure on dance. But then I was like, that's definitely the fucking finale, and. Boy, if it was bouncy, then it's going to go off. And I was like, Elizabeth doesn't want to be here for that. And as soon as we got outside, you were like, I'm so glad we left because I knew during that song <laughs> we were all going to die. <laughs> now, I did check the news this morning. That <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? No, no balconies collapsed at the shrine last night. Um, but I also was like, in a situation like this. Yeah. Do you, what are the steps like? Do you, I go, you know, am I going to go up to like someone who's working there and be like, hey, listen, the balcony was really bouncing. I just, I don't know if you want to have like architects come and check into, you know, oh, I wow, don't, maybe that's an email you send. I what if no one's sending that email? Well, no one probably is because also like, what are the checks and balances to something like that? Surely the city is inspecting things. You think that, but... And also when the shrine was built, it's an old situation. Yeah. Did they know people are going to be fucking going off at a Stromae concert? <laughs> like, were audiences at that point more docile? Do you know what I mean? Well, sh for sure. I mean, they were... Yeah. Anyway, so... Send that email. Maybe I'll send an email. I don't know to whom. That would be... If you sent that email, I will. It would really warm my heart. I will send it. Uh, one last thing about that concert that I also wanted to say that I don't know if you noticed, and then we can talk about flying. Um, I thought it was so amazing that the entire crowd was standing the entire time, and that to me feels the very French and international of it all. I haven't not usually us Americans sit most of the concert, especially. Do you think that's true? Like I not this was novel that everyone was standing the entire Weird. time. That's true. All the way up the entire mezzanine, all the whole yeah. theater. Yeah, and even like songs of his that are kind of slower and more exactly. beautiful and whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's true. If this was an American artist, I think there would have been times where a lot of people would be sitting. Okay, can we talk about my fear of flying? Yeah. And what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I guess. I don't know. There was a there was an article about a particularly turbulent flight two weeks ago that I clicked. And um, it showed images of like eight people were hurt, like a girl broke her nose. And it showed images of what the like aisle of the airplane looked like once they landed it. And it was, you know, and you have a friend who's a pilot. I know that turbulence, like in flight turbulence almost never causes actual issues like it's really uncomfortable it feels weird but it's basically just air whipping around and you know the built the planes are built to handle it so but then then I started looking like articles are populating my feed and like it, climate experts are saying um you know there are different types of turbulence and acute Severe turbulence, which is what hits like 
in the middle, and I'm really sorry, like trigger warning to anyone. You just don't even listen to this if you have a fear of flying or if you are flying, um, which is the type of turbulence that you cannot account for. It comes out of nowhere, It's and it's severe and usually lasts like 10 minutes and it's really uncomfortable, but you get through it, is going to become much more common due to climate change. And it's going to last longer and... I, I'm not just like, I don't want to die from a plane crash. I also don't want to ever think that I'm going to die. And it takes very a very little amount of turbulence to get me there. Yeah. Like, I'm so scared of even being scared. Yeah. That I'm, I'm just already kind of laying the groundwork. I might be one of those people who just never flies again. Like... Well, you told that might be coming down the pipeline. I'm just warning you. And then there was a flight from Spain to like... I want to say Paraguay last week where now this is the thing that set me over the edge. They were in such bad weather, such inclement weather, inclement. Yeah. Inclement. That they had to make an emergency landing. Great. Safety first. The nose of the airplane was ripped off. (laughs) The windshield of the cockpit was cracked that's when you want those aviator sunglasses on if you're the pilot. There is footage of the plane as it's landing. Uh-huh. And there are 45 people on this like plane, which also, I don't know why in a weird way that scares me more than like if it were packed, you know, as a commercial flight. I don't know why. Like there's something but about. it's still a full size plane, but it, not that many people on it. It was like half full. What's your logic? I don't know. You're fucking spinning out. I, I don't, don't know. I, I am not. spinning out. I am spinning out. But I watched footage that people took inside the plane as they were making, like, going through it. They all thought they were going to die. And you watch the footage. And it's like, yeah, you're going to die. Like, there's no world where you make it out of this. The plane is absolutely you're not yeah, I do. going crazy bonkers. Like, it's it's like a slamming around, roller coastering, huge drops, huge whatevers. A woman, I mean, the woman that they interviewed in this in her article was like, I, she had her daughter on that flight, and she said, I love you. Like, this is goodbye. It's going to be okay because we'll see each other on the other side. Like, fully, we're done for. And all of the screams and stuff happening during this footage – I'm like, I cannot handle the fact that this exists. Okay. Let's pa- slow down for I a second. Don't know what to number know. one. Uh, okay. Number one, I-, I walked into the living room this is maybe two days ago, and Elizabeth just looked at me and goes, I, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to fly again. And I was like, What are you talking about? Like, we're not, when are you flying? We'll get to that. But at that point, you weren't flying anywhere. But there was no reason. And then you start telling me the stories you just told me. I'm like, okay. I walked out of the room and you're like, you have to see this video. And I was like, (laughs) no, I'm not watching that video. And you kept trying to make me watch this video. And I said, no, because I'm smart. And you, of all people, have no business clicking on any of that shit anymore. Why? Why would you do this to yourself? Why would you watch that video? What are you getting out of it? Well, I don't, I guess it's like, this is where I'm like, I don't know, is it preventative? Like, for you to, oh, so you, so you're scared to fly? Yeah. Well, you know what? I do need to ask my mom about my grandpa who never flew again after being in the military. Are you serious? Yeah. I got to find out about that. Okay. But, but when in the grand scheme of things, I, I'm like doing the math, you know, however millions of flights are happening and whatever period of time and, of those, what percentage encounters any issue, you know, whatever. It's like, I know it's statistically an incredibly safe way to travel and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, my anxiety is so big about this. I And what's a bummer is it it had gone away for a while. Yeah. What do you think made it go away? What was the last flight I took? I feel like I had a bumpy ride. Oh, when you went to Boise. Yes, and it it kind of it kind of restarted it. Like the t- coming back from that, 
landing in LA. It was really windy. I was really nervous. And um, so that was that. I see. Okay. Well, I don't know. Number one, you got to talk to my buddy, Chad. Yeah. He will lay it down for you, all the facts. Maybe we can share that conversation with our listeners because I feel like if anyone has, I don't mean to spread this dysfunction, but yeah. it is something that's on my mind right now. And don't, I don't ever look at any of those videos. Nothing is good. Nothing's good in those. That's a great way of looking at it. You know, the reason I watch those videos or I don't like spend time watching them. Those just both kind of appeared to me and then I couldn't help myself. But there's this weird mechanism in my brain that's like, if I think part of me was hoping I would go like, oh, well, that didn't seem that bad. But of course, that's not going to be the case. Like, if you watch it, maybe your brain can kind of prepare for something. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I know it's irrational, but there's this kind of like... Maybe if you watch it and process it enough, then you're kind of like prepared for it. But actually the opposite happens where you be, I just spiral out into more fear and anxiety. And um, I, you're right. I don't need to watch those because it's like that's the one in a million time that that happened. But, you know, then last night at the Stromae concert, I'm like, everyone's thinking it's the like everyone's going, this should be fine. Right. Like. Yeah. This thing was probably built this way. I'm sure they check it all the time. Like, there are other concerts where people are jumping, surely, that it's yeah. been fine. And yeah, yeah. But then you're, I'm always just like, but what if this is the one time? And then maybe it is. I don't know. I mean, you need to be the, the plain thing. Well, I flew with the kids without you recently, also to Boise and going into Boise. Holy shit, it was gnarly. And I didn't tell you that because you were coming no, to Boise. You didn't. Because I knew I you were coming a couple days later. I wouldn't I wasn't gonna tell but see, you. See, don't you find this odd? No, I because, feel like it's happening more and more frequently. No, go flying into Boise is that's pretty typical because it's getting up in the mountains and stuff like that. Um <sighs> But here's the thing: as a parent, when that was happening, I also wasn't sitting, I was like, our two kids had two seats. And then I was across the aisle in the aisle seat because there were three of us. But I, you just have to play it super cool, like nothing was going on. Well, yeah, on. when you're with the kids, yes. Yeah. But when you're by yourself. But I don't want you whipping out your phone at like some bumpy ride being like doing the video message, you know. Well, it depends how bumpy it is. And then you just hope someone finds your phone or do you go like live on IG? I don't know what you're actually even talking about. Like for the people that like record a last minute video message for their family. Oh, God. <laughs> Weren't you talking about that earlier? No. A woman was with her daughter and said goodbye to her on the plane. Oh, and then she told a reporter that later? Yeah. So, so you've mad never at seen. You, right? <laughs> no, so you've never seen any of those videos? Andy, so what are you doing right now? <laughs> Okay. Like honestly, what are you doing right because now? Because I thought you, you were. Are, <laughs> okay, you okay, are okay, now for, I am, yeah, for... now I am feeling a little. I'm feeling a little mischievous <laughs> because I do want you to know. Because I need you to know though that that is a genre of video that is out there. You've never seen but any why of those. Do you need me to know, Andy. You're because I thought you're you were doing... talking about those. Why? What? Okay. First of all, you weren't listening, I guess. And second of all, yes, I was. For you to say. Like, why do you watch those videos? Blah, blah, blah. And now you're going, oh, you don't know this whole genre exists with a smile on your face? What is wrong with you? Like, honestly, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm wondering. <sighs> well, anyway, if anyone has any tips on how to conquer this, I know it's I mean, a lot of people take pills. That might be the answer. That might be the answer that for me. Might that might be, be my future. It. And then the irony was we have had we have no flights planned. Yep. And this is what sucks is I want to travel. Like one of the things I'm most looking forward to in the future is traveling a shitload. <laughs> but by boat. Have I guess by boat. But oh, I hate traveling by boat. Train, you know, whatever. Oh, but train maybe. So uh then 
part of the stress of the work week. Not that this is stressful. I'm I'm happy to do this. I love being on set, but I might be going, you know, on a on a plane ride sooner than later. <laughs> sooner than later. That was the irony. That's ir- um, ironic, right? I think so. After I was like, "Why are you even talking? Why are you even thinking about this?" And then one day later, I have to fly now. Do you remember? So we were talking about this thing last night at the concert and the the you know balcony that we're on, and um, when we were coming home, you were cracking me up. I was a little drunk, but you, I was thinking about the hive mentality, like. My instinct is something is wrong right now. This balcony is going to collapse. But because everyone else, for the most part, seems fine with it and like on board with it, <laughs> yeah. then <laughs> it must be fine. And I'm just like, I'm not buying into the hive mentality. And you you did something or said something. Yeah. And I was like, so if everyone's jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge, are you going to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge? And you were like, everyone's jumping off? Like... Yeah, probably. It probably means like something <laughs> bad is happening, and we all need to jump off the bridge, which really made me laugh. Like a big monster is chasing you all. So, um, okay, I have another thing to share, and then we'll wrap this up. Sorry, I'm like very rambly. I kind of, but I'm. This podcast always puts me in a much better mood, and I feel that way right now. Um, Great. So, at the Sentinel Awards. Yes. I was outside and I could not get back inside. What and happened? because the doors like didn't have a way to get back in. It was okay. almost like airport doors. And <laughs> <laughs> this this very nice man, young man. Can I pause for a second? Yeah. What are airport doors? <laughs> well that you can't get back in on? Well, you know, like at baggage claim once you leave you might not necessarily be able to come back in. No reentry. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So this very nice young man, very dapper, um, opens the door for me. And he goes, so I don't know, like, if you've seen Garden State recently, but do you think it holds up? Just out of the blue. And I was like, wait, what? And for any new listeners who don't know... Our old podcast, Totally Lame, featured a segment called Lame or Totally. Oh, fuck. Rapid Fire. And we would that. ask our guest if they thought things were cool or not um, very quickly. And one of them was Garden State, the movie. And so it took me, like, I was so thrown by it. And I actually, it didn't even take me a second. I immediately thought about Lame or Totally. And I actually was, like, about to go, like, well, that's really funny you ask. because. And then I was like, how do I explain this? Was it a fan? It's not worth it. It was a fan. Ian. Shout out Ian. Wow. Yes. What a great uh, pull by Ian. I know. Very, very smooth. And it was really cool. And it was really nice to talk to him. Wow. That's sick. Yeah. (laughs) Do you have like a palate cleanser for anyone? I feel like you gotta have, you must have something. I might. I really might. Can I look at my little notes? Yeah. Ba-da-da-da-da. Oh, okay. This is nice. Um, I wanted to tell you, I think we've talked about our daughter and how cool she is. Yeah. I saw her being at peak coolness the other day. Oh, did you? I went to pick her up from school and... uh I got there and she was hanging out with like much older kids. Okay. Nice. At a picnic table, three boys, one girl, all probably like three grades above her and her holding court. And they were just playing with tech deck, those little mini finger skateboards. No way. And I was just like. She looked like the coolest person I've ever seen <laughs> hanging out with the big kids. And they were all peers. Wow. Just playing with their finger skateboards. And then I was like, hey, I'm here. And then, you know, she just rolls over, like gets her stuff and says goodbye to all of them. But I'm like, and I've noticed that like there's other, like she's friends with some 
upperclassmen, which that's just <laughs> always cool. Do you remember how out of reach, like someone a grade above you felt like? Oh, yeah. Like, can you imagine hanging with someone three grades above you? Yeah, no. Like, wow. We've got a cool. I don't, Very I don't, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Is that a which power is our, Yeah, that is. That's fun. Yeah. Life goal achieved is to have a very cool. No, I'm just kidding. Also worth noting, incredibly kind, the kindest heart. I mean, that's. I don't know if that's incredibly worth noting. I think the headline here is cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. Appreciate thank it. you for all of the reviews. They mean so much to us. I'm um, gonna check France. I guess Belgium. Bel- Belgian. And you said Belgium. one of them. Belgium. People are Belgian from Belgium. Got it. Um, Do Iran. We... Okay. I think those were the three countries. Yeah. Next week, I want to talk about Iceland and Japan. Okay. I'll put that on my notes. Cool. Great. Right. This is fun. Thanks for putting me in a better mood. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Good night. Good night.